We're back at it. A little liquid courage. Been MIA for a couple weeks, unfortunately, from YouTube, Instagram, browsers. Kind of ran into a little stretch of bad luck. Tooth, my top front tooth up here started absolutely killing me. Like it was like, it was like worse than when I broke my arm and uh, went to the dentist and uh, now I'm scheduled to get a root canal next week. And the reason for the pain and the root canal and stuff is because of teeth grinding at night. Um, I do a lot of grinding when I sleep um, of the teeth among other things. I spent a few days handling that, trying to minimize the pain, get on some antibiotics and stuff. And then once that kind of got settled, um, then it kind of came down with a little bit of a stomach bug type thing. A little bit of a bad stretch there, but um, hopefully uh, now in a better groove for the time being. All that aside, feels amazing to start focusing on the squat, bench, deadlift again. It's been a while. Look at this it's that, it's that, it's like I'm blacking out. The strength is coming back slowly but surely with the uh, reintroduction of carbs, increased calories. Um, I'm hoping that it'll just keep going up, up, up as uh, time goes, but uh, no rush really. Threw some recent training clips up in this video. Nothing too exciting, just wanted to get the ball rolling again, so to speak. Um, so, but thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. So here we'll start off with the bench press portion first. So I've been trying to bench twice a week um, in some capacity to just try to jumpstart it. Um, have, have Didn't do any specific bench training really um, while I was out injured completely. Here we have Oak trying to assert a little dominance. Um, I'll give him respect for that. Uh, it's not going to work, but it's a good try. Um, I've been doing like one day feet up, maybe one day feet down, just depending on how the back's feeling. If it's a little tight, I'll keep that, that feet, those feet up, um, a good way to kind of get some upper body volume in, uh, without putting too much strain on the lower back by arching. So here we have Oak setting up his camera for his bench, almost like he's setting it up for a U-porn video, you know, right up the alley, right up that snatch. So he's got four big ones on the bar here, about equal to one key shaft or a 4x4 four four at Popeyes. He's directing traffic here a little bit, just making sure I'm not in the way. Um, that POV angle needs to be kind of straight on, no obstruction. But I know Oak uses feet up bench in his training for a very similar reason to the reason I've been doing it. And just to take strain off that lower back, even though he doesn't really have a serious lower back injury or a disc injury, um, I think he gets a lot of cramping, some SI joint issues when those feet go down sometimes. So just it's something to keep in mind if, you, if you're someone who's benching frequently, um, maybe you're having some struggles with your back or tweaked it on squat or deadlift, uh, just a way that you can keep benching um, with some back issues. A quick little reverse diet update um, after stopping the keto. I believe I stopped the keto right around January 10th, so it's been almost exactly a month since then. The first thing I did when I got off keto was I upped the protein pretty significantly. Uh, that was one thing that I definitely, I dropped probably too low and um, definitely was not getting close to enough of, so I just draw, I just hiked that up immediately. Right now with the protein, about like 215 to 225 grams. Other two things I did, each week calories up 100, and each week carbs up about 25 grams. And then I just adjusted the fats down accordingly to meet the calories. Right now that evens out to 2,500 calories a day, and 125 carbs. That doesn't sound like very much at all, but the the slower you can go, the better, pretty much. That's why you see people all the time after like a long period of strict dieting, after a bodybuilding show or whatever, they just like balloon up to straight like Michelin man after like three weeks. Okay, go. Oh, we're going? Okay. 
Jay said go. Jay said go, so. After a long time of being severely restricted, your metabolism has slowed. Your body's not ready to handle the calories you're accustomed to. And it'll just be like fat store, fat store, fat store. Um, so the slower is better. I switch pretty much all from red meat to white meat. And you know, cut out all the fatty meats like bacon, salami, that kind of stuff. And that was just for blood work reasons. My cholesterol was through the roof. But I just heat up like five or six ounces of chicken and uh, you know, there you are almost at your protein. I'm gonna cook up this skirt steak today though. I don't know about you, but I get, I'm getting nauseous just straight having chicken. I'm starting to have dreams of balsamic chicken. I don't like it. And while it's good, I'd uh, rather dream of bison if you know what I mean. Body weight is actually still right around 205. So that was may maybe a couple pounds heavier than what it was at the, right at the end of keto. But that's still, you know, that's still pretty good. That That's usually a good indicator that you're going at a good pace with the carbs and calories and everything. So here, just want to give a quick look how the lower body sessions are looking like. Uh, discussed the upper earlier in this video. So keeping it very simple and very linear. So three sets of six weekly on sumo deadlifts, uh, starting off off these low blocks. So started off really light, I think like 225 about a month ago. And then the goal is just to add 15, 25 pounds uh, each week. Whoa, this one was not meant for YouTube. I am sorry. You guys are in for a treat. This one was supposed to go to Patreon. Uh, $30 a month for more content like this. I'd say at least 50% of the exercises, probably more like 75% on these lower body days, revolve around strengthening the core. Uh, basically, my squat and deadlift are only going to go as far as my back will allow them to. So a huge part of training from here on out is just going to be trying to bulletproof that core as much as possible. Um, because if, if that doesn't hold up, then there's zero chance I'll ever be able to, you know, maintain a heavy training regimen. So far, I think it's making a really big difference. I mean, the back's feeling a hundred times better than it was a couple months ago. So that is a, a very encouraging sign.